Hey, today we got a triple video. Not only is it a tech video, because we're experimenting with a different camera, uh, we have a booze, uh, is that going to focus? Yeah, a booze video and a low carb video. So let's see what we got. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here today. Over the last couple videos, I don't know if anybody watches any of these videos we do. I've been having problems. I've been filming on a, on a uh, Droid, Android phone, and it's blurry. If you can't see the screen, you're not using the right lens, you don't know what's happening. I've kept the videos up for posterity. I don't need to be a perfectionist, but uh, we're using a uh, mirrorless camera today with a kind of a cheapo lens but I think it's gonna work out a lot better. Um, it's 50 megabit uh, recording. I can go as high as I think 72, but I think um, this is all geek talk. But anyway, what are we talking about today? We're talking about this Bon and Vive spiked seltzer. Does it focus? Yeah, it does focus pretty good. How do you like that? <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm getting better. Um, we like the spiked seltzers in general because Ugh. They're low carb and they don't have sulfites. Uh, some of them do, but they don't have the same kind of kidney and liver damaging um, uh, junk in it that uh, that fermented wine has. And I, I was drinking red wine for a long time and I noticed something was happening and it was definitely the wine because when I stopped and switched to something that wasn't like a fermented grape juice in some wooden barrel with tons of splinters, I, I feel a million times better, all my internal bleeding has stopped, and I'm drinking a lot less alcohol overall, volume-wise, probably half, half the alcohol. But uh, we narrowed our, our seltzers down to um, Smirnoff Spiked Sparkling Seltzer, and there's this new one that came out, Wild Basin, which I thought was good. I mean, the flavors were so wildly varying that uh, Ay, ay, ay. Uh, some of them were, were unbearable and some of them were delicious. Um, but we mix up our, our, our drinks with ginger and lemon. That's, that's the way you do it. But today I'm trying this Bon and Vive. The Bon and Vive, I just felt like trying it. It's only six cans, four and a half percent alcohol, and it's uh, zero added sugar per can. However, if you're a low carb or a carnivore type guy, uh, you shouldn't be drinking an alcohol at all. But it, uh, it's two grams of carbs per 12 ounces, which is double that of the Smirnoff and the Wild Basin. I thought about this a lot. I don't want to add extra carbs no matter what, but I, I decided to make a human sacrifice here because when you think about it, if it takes me, uh, let's say, for argument's sake, I drink a can every half hour. This uh, this is over three hours. It's an extra six grams of carbs, which you know, burning and all this other stuff. It's it's not. I don't think it'll make much of a difference because carbs don't accumulate. They. I remember the uh, rule of thumb was like, if, as long as you don't eat more than you know 50 grams of carbs in a meal, a single sitting or within an hour or whatever, that your blood sugar won't, won't spike too much. I don't buy that. Um, I'm more like in the 10 or 20 gram per hour max. I, I never eat that much anyway. I might get it incidentally if I put cheese on my, uh, my meat, uh, but most of the food I eat is uh, zero carb. Um, so this extra gram of carbs is, is pretty, uh, pretty significant. And, Keep in mind that some of the spiked seltzers out there have five grams of carbs per can, which at that point you're pushing, you're pushing your blood sugar, especially if you knock them down. Um, fast. I water mine down for a reason, and that's just to keep the, the it's throttling the input. The reason I wanted to buy this was because I, I was over at Bottle King in Hackettstown and I saw they had one uh, flavor called the uh, Prickly Peach, which uh, you look on the box and it's only one gram of carbs. They didn't have that flavor at my uh, 
the, the ShopRite liquors uh, I went to in Clinton to get this one for $8.49 a six pack and they charge $15.49 a case of 12. Um, it's the mixed case for all these fruity flavors. I'm not even going to try it, I don't think. I'm, I had them order me the prickly peach. Um, and I'm stuck with this, what's the flavor? Ro uh, black cherry rosemary. I'm not a big fan of rosemary, but in this case, I'm going to try it straight up. I never do it straight up. It tastes like a black cherry soda. I don't taste any rosemary in there. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of rosemary anyway. But we'll save that for my next drink. Um, like I said, if you drink them straight up, everybody's going to have a different opinion about it because that's the way these things are technically designed to be consumed. Even though they have a um, recipe on the back where you make uh, bourbon and brandy and lime and and then mix it with this seltzer. That sounds like a really mega, mega drink. Uh, but I've had, I think I'm on like can three or four. And I have to say the, the flavor of these, I think that extra gram of carbs comes from, from, from the ingredients. Uh, duh. But here's what I'm not a big fan of. And it's the source of their alcohol. In this particular one, it's um, cold fermented corn sugar. And I think that's where they get the uh, the uh, alcohol from. And this has a couple other suspicious uh, ingredients. Um, sodium citrate, which is I believe just the, the lemon, the, the tang, and then there's malted rice. So this, this has carbs in it, and like more carbs. And I'm not a big fan. So you gotta be careful with these spiked seltzers. They're not all, all you know, rainbows and unicorns, as some people like to say. But, you know, to mix it up, I don't think I'm gonna turn into a Macy's balloon uh, from drinking six cans of this Bon & V. But I think this is targeted at girls. They have like mermaids on the on the uh, can and it's, it's made from this company called uh, Boathouse Beverage in, uh, they have all sorts of uh, locations here. It's uh, Norwalk, Connecticut and uh, and uh, Baldwinville, uh, Baldwinsville, New York. I have no idea what, I mean, I didn't do any research on, on this company. But uh, I think for our next little experiment, human experiment, human lab rat, what I'm going to do is figure out a way to get the equivalent alcohol in one of these cans. And I'm just gonna start drinking vodka. Um, However, this brings me to an interesting point. I, I, I've categorized three different buzzes from the various alcohols, and I've, I've only picked three. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's other ways to drink, uh, but there's booze, there's wine, and then there's beer, or m malted beverages. And I get, personally, three distinctly different buzzes. Beer, like just say a Corona or a Sam Adams, first beer I drink, let's say the first half a can, I get a happy. I'm like, eh, hey, you feel a buzz. It's, it's interesting. But then as I drink all that fizzy um, malted uh, hops and all that, I get gassy. I cannot eat, I mean, I, in the past, I cannot eat at all drinking beer. It, it just doesn't uh, rhyme with me. And uh, it's uh, a, lot of, a lot of calories and a lot of carbs in beer, in my opinion. Um, Guinness was also one of my favorites because that was very much less gassy and I could, I, could, I could pound the Guinness or a Boddington's in a heartbeat. And then the next type of uh, wine, which was my go-to for many years, is wine. I like red wine personally because it's less sugar than white wine, um, half, half the sugar. And I think the buzz is more sophisticated. However, like I said, the the long-term effects of uh, frequent, like six out of seven days a week, wine drinking became a problem. And I, my body was telling me, and I listened. 
So I switched over to these seltzers. But, and then the third kind is booze. I mean, it could be tequila, it could be whiskey, bourbon, or vodka. And there's a couple other of those nasty ass drinks out there. Gin, which is, gin is awful. Um, but I, whenever I drank alcohol, I did it like, a, like in a highball glass, you know, half, half alcohol, half like a cranberry juice or whatever. And every now and then in my heyday, we would do shots, you know, with lemon or whatever, lemon shot, lemon drops, whatever they were called. But I, I think a 12 ounce uh, at 5%, let's say, would be that 6 ounces at 10%, 3 ounces at uh, 20%, uh, ounce and a half at 40%. So I'd have to drink about an ounce and a half of vodka. I'm just, that's just quick math. I'm not sure if I'm right. Um, an ounce and a half of vodka probably equals one can of spiked seltzer. So if I drink six uh, cans, that's uh, nine ounces of uh, vodka that I have to drink a night to equal the alcohol in here. So I'm going to try it. Uh, if I put an ounce and a half shot in my little uh, ball glass here, I'm using the green straw, you're going to see the, the reflection. That sucks. I mean the transparency. But the booze was uh, angry. It's a totally different, it's not a happy for me, and I'm sure it is the same for other people, that hard alcohol has a totally different effect on, uh, on a person, and I, for me at least. But I think in the end that may actually be significantly less expensive than buying these seltzers. Let's say for argument's sake, they're, uh, eight bucks, uh, let's just say they're 15 bucks a, a 12 pack. Um, I would get probably, it would probably be 50% less money spent. I'll have to use twice the non-alcoholic um, seltzer to make my quart of uh, beverage here. But I think it's going to be uh, cheaper in the long run. If I buy like a Tito's, a big jug of Tito's for 29 bucks, I could probably get like the equivalent of like almost two or three cases of alcohol worth of these. So okay, that's uh, that's a solid you know, a third of the cost. So we're gonna try that next time. I'm gonna do vodka. One and a half ounces of vodka per 32 ounces of uh, ice and seltzer. So that's it. Um, I don't know how you feel, but if you have stuck through this 15 minute video, how you feel about what kind of alcohol you drink and how it plays into your low carb, carnivore, or keto lifestyle. Um, but this is uh, something I like talking about. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed my little conversation. This isn't 30 second sound bites or quick uh, video editing or me walking around with a camera in my face. This is just me having a conversation with a camera and the 10 people that like to watch it. In time, I will get my subscribers. You watch. I'll polish up my image. I'll start wearing fancy clothes. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do something. I, I'll have to probably sell out, which I won't do. I'm not going to sell out. I will not sell out. I will not sell out ever. It's just not worth it. Your soul is more important than selling out for a few dollars. Um, I want natural people to come over and watch this type of content. So that's it. This new camera. We're using a, a not new camera. I've had it for years, but. SLR this time with an external mic. Let's see how it sounds. Let's go edit it and post now. Have a good week ahead.